Hello guys and welcome to our first episode on creating a deck on Wargame Red Dragon. So, the first deck we're going to be doing today, as you probably saw in the title, is NATO deck. Okay, so what we're going to do is, get you straight in here, it's all around NATO, so blue 4, we're not going to pick any uh, specific country, so obviously blue 4, great. Okay, so first off, let's start at logistics, the main area we want to start off with, okay? But obviously beforehand, I've already gone over what I want to pick and what stuff I think is best, and obviously gone over a few things. So it's pretty much an all-round deck um, for all the countries, okay? So let's start off with logistics, right? The first thing we're going to start off with is an FOB, okay? Nothing special here. Literally, pick a country you want. Obviously, I'm from Britain, so I'm going to pick the British FOB just to have the British symbol on the side of my fob, all right? FOB I'm always going to have just for the fact in this deck... It's just default thing, really. This is a default normal NATO deck, so we're going to stick with an FOB on the first start. Okay. Right. The secondary thing we're going to have to have is obviously a command unit, right? My personal opinion, I have two um, command vehicles, okay? One will be a vehicle, and the secondary one is going to be a command section, okay? So what I'm going to select for the command, the CV section, I'm going to go with, right, the... Denmark, the DC, CMD command squad, okay? Reason being is for the weapon systems they have, okay? They have the MG3, which has a range of 980 meters, alright? It was a choice between Denmark and USA. This is fun, USA, but now here. But as you look, the M240 hasn't got a longer range, so it kind of gives it a little bit more effectiveness to the Denmark um, command section and it you also notice there the rate of fire for Denmark is also 470 compared to the US which is 350 so it kind of gives that little bit of an edge so your command section stuck in the back or the building and they sometimes you get a bit of infantry or special forces coming they got a little bit more chance of surviving and holding out until you send reinforcements reinforcements in so that's the reason why if you're gonna have a command section and any NATO one the best CV command section in my personal opinion would be this um the Denmark's okay they produce good right I have three choices okay I have the trucks the Jupiter the M113 and the Lynx all right in my personal opinion I keep saying my personal opinion sorry about that, but I believe I like to get in there fast get these in there get them off the ground quick right so I'm gonna go with the Lynx okay so the fastest um uh, rotary aircraft uh rotary helicopter in the game I believe it should be but it is, yeah, 300 kilometers per hour. Uh, I'll also go have a few more and have a look. If I'm wrong there, let me know in the comments below. Okay, next thing. I've got our first squadron, okay? We're going to go for another CV unit, because obviously three units is good enough, but we obviously want more. This is more of a command uh, sort of logistics side of things. I'm personally uh, going to go for a Eva, the Lynx. AH1, due to the fact that it's fast, gets the locations, and then get down the ground. If not, if you don't want Lynx AH1, I advise you to go for possibly one of the hardened ground unit, the German Leopard. I believe it's Leopard. Yeah, Leopard 2. All right, some of you out there probably thinking, ah, oh, all about the British, uh, American tanks, or the British. Okay, this is a little, little pinpoint. Let's have a look, and I'll show you what my reasoning for this is. Okay. Oh crap. That's the wrong thing, I marked the wrong thing. Bugger. There we go, Leopard 2, and compare it to the Americans, okay. Right, Leopard 2, obviously 10 uh, points more. The reason why I picked it is the range. The range in it is much more further, so it gives you an extra 100 meters uh, advantage on any other advancing vehicles. And it hasn't got as many weapon systems on it. Obviously, the, the Abrams has got a Browning M240, but that, for a it doesn't really matter. Unless you've got infantry on the ground, but most of the time I kind of back my um, CV unit up with an infantry unit near it, nearby it anyway. So that's the reason why I choose either Leopard or Lynx, okay? Depending on your personal reference, you can either go for Leopard or Lynx, doesn't matter. Um, the Lynx I'm going to use um, in this one, due to the fact that I like to get to, like I said before, the, the uh, command section. I like to get to the uh, sectors quick and fast, so Lynx is good for doing so, but it also... Obviously it's the fast editor, but it doesn't allow you to have armor, so it's pretty much vulnerable if they got aircraft or artillery. So if you want to get in cover, 
um, and get all your CV vehicles to be secure. Advisor you go for, maybe the tank or something like anything else. But they're my um, advisory options on them. Okay, once you get your command vehicles, you then want to um, move on to logistics, uh, logistical um, vehicles that are obviously going to provide supplies and stuff like that. There's not many to pick from, but these are the ones I say you should always get if you make a, NATO, a full NATO deck, okay? You have a personal choice now. You have uh, the American or the German um, C Stallion. Obviously, uh, where is it? Here it is. The reason why I'm picking this over all the rest, most common one we use with the Chinook, stuff like that, but this bad boy is big. Complying of 3,700 litres of ammunition, fuel, and everything. So you're going to get a very big, a very large quantity of stuff getting out there. Um, obviously, it's quite fast for a twinkle of power, so it's, <laughs> it pretty much tops up the speed of the Lynx. So it's pretty ridiculous. The only downside thing to this aircraft is that it is 85 points. It's quite expensive compared to, um, let's say, the Chinook here, which is only 45. But due to the fact that you're not going to be in the game straight, it takes quite a while for your um, units to run out of ammunition and stuff like that. I kind of think, put it in the situation saying, right, let's just think about it now, sit back and look. Right, we're going to, it's not going to be straight away, you're going to get into contact sometimes. So you can obviously can earn a few more points. And also it's a bigger um, aircraft, so it allows you to more capabilities and lasting longer. So we're going to go for that. Alright, you can either do two of those if you want to go all airborne. But let's say you want to keep sometimes stuff grounded to the ground, okay? Because obviously there might be a emplacement stuff like that. The l secondary um, logistical supply vehicle, I'd say, still within the Americans, is the biggest. Um, I believe it is the biggest. Um, and oh my god, I can't get my words out. God, I'm rushing through this. I should slow down a bit. Let's just do a bit more information on these things. So the, I'm going to go for the Haiti MTT due to the fact that it's got a very large supply. 2,400 litres. If anyone wants to know what HEMTT means, it's Heavy Expanded Mobile Tactical Truck. Okay. Um, I don't know if I should go with more information like in real life about these vehicles or just keep it in-game. Mm. Yeah, fuck it. I need to bib that out. So if you hit a bib there, I'll bib something out because I said the wrong word. Okay, so basically this vehicle is in a series of eight wheel oh and forget that, I'm not gonna go through all of the stuff information that I know in my head. So yeah the reason why I'm going for that is because it's a um hasn't got no armor so it's gonna be very vulnerable but due to the fact that it's got a big space it kind of one of the best um wheeled or land um supply vehicles so I'm gonna go for that so I've got a bit of a right here so I've got um a land and aerial um supply units so my CH fifty three can get to the targets pretty fast say um, vehicles and islands, stuff like that, so they can supply places, uh, in places that are quite far. And my um, heavy expanded mobile tactical truck, the HEMTT, can pretty much, I'd probably most likely have it set in areas, obviously you can get them quite far, uh, depending, depending on the tactical situation, but you can get them in different locations to the CH-53. And obviously the Lynx and the squadron have already explained. So that is my opinion of these vehicles, I don't select them. So that's for the logistics. If you think anything different, uh, just whack a comment below what else I could add or any of the better units because it's always going to be changing, you know, because you might figure out something in the future, say, oh, that unit's better here, move stuff around. It's always sort of a good thing to do and keep your unit fresh. All right, moving on to the infantry. So, one of the things that in all of my NATO decks or even my British decks, is one thing I always have. Okay, starting off with obviously special forces. I am going to start off with picking an SAS, alright? Either one, Lynx A87 or Puma HC1 is your personal choice. My opinion, I'm going to go for the Lynx A87 SAS due to the fact that Lynx is fast, it can get to the location quick, like I've already explained, and it's equipped with 68mm rockets, which obviously can. When it's going in to drop off the troops at an evac location or anything like that, it obviously can provide a little bit of cover while it's dropping the men off. Okay, on to the reason why I'm picking the SAS. Obviously, they are the SAS, the British Special Forces Special Air Service, okay? I must admit, in my personal opinion, I think they're up the top. I think they are one of the top uh, Special Forces in this game due to the fact they are absolutely fantastic at... 
assaulting around positions, and also holding towns most of the time. Not holding tanks against towns against infantry, but mainly against vehicles and aircraft. If you want a um, anti-air infantry group, I would say most likely get the SAS. The only default, the only problem with this is their price is quite expensive. But I'm telling you now, you will not go wrong. These SAS, they their stingers, okay, are ridiculous. They're actually you never see, you hardly miss, hardly miss. They're always on target. So you obviously they're equipped with an 84, an FIM. 92 a stinger and they seriously pack a punch they're, they're multiple roles you can either have them hold out towns assault towns take out vehicles and go around rear stealth missions anything you can really think of these guys can do they'll be on the ground for you got so they are really really good uh tool to have and i just think they're fantastic one if you want special forces honestly put sas top of your list right next infantry unit for nato i'd say I now want to pick sort of an infantry unit for more like um, kind of the roles to SS, a bit of salting, but also a bit of holding towns because you need that sort of capability there. What I'm going to go for is the United States Marines, okay? The reason why I'm using the US Marines is that they're equipped with the Minimi, the Law, and the M16, so they're pretty good, or well, not pretty good, they are bloody good at holding towns and obviously moving against infantry and stuff like that. We have four options here. I could have gone for these ones here, but these are the old ones which I don't really want. You want uh, the modern ones. So, what I am going to go for is the US Marines with the LVTP. The reason why I'm picking this is... Let's just look at these. Because the LVTPs can provide you an amphibious role with the US Marines. So, not only you have them for land, you can also assault them. Say you want to prepare... Well, I've done it many times before, which are probably in this video as well, or another video. I prepared um, an amphibious assault and move straight across the river, amphibious assault without them noticing. Or noticing without them even suspecting things are going to happen. So, they are absolutely fantastic of obviously using the vehicles. The vehicles are good to come to the price for only 15 points, which is good. They're obviously equipped with the frag rounds and they're also equipped with the M2 Browning. So, you can get them into towns obviously via sea or by land. They're quite fast vehicles, so they're good. They have a good multi role uh, unit to use. The US Marines, so I mainly use them for cold towns and assaulting. So, they are definitely going on my list. Okay, next. The third thing I want is another another land unit. Because obviously, I've got the US Marines. I, I like holding towns. This is kind of a net deck towards like controlling most of the ground. It's kind of an all out role, but another thing you want to use is. The German Panzer Grenadiers. These guys are fantastic, as well as the US Marines are holding ground, okay? They have the weaponry is roughly the same, but obviously the, L, uh, the MG3 is pretty pretty long range, it's a bit more powerful, and obviously gives that a bit um a bit more of a different edge, you know. The the weapon the grenade launch isn't as good as the the US Marines, but it still it does the job. The reason why we're picking these mainly is because it comes with the Marda A3. As you probably know, this vehicle is fantastic, okay? It, obviously, it's not going to be going out one-on-one -on -one versus tanks, but you get a two choices. You get good infantry, and you get a good armoured vehicle. I'd probably say it's a little bit better than the LVTP that the US Marines have, but obviously the US Marines have a better infantry, which is good. It's not amphibious, which is a bit of a bummer, but your Panzer Grenadiers, you send them into a town, Panzer Grenadiers jump out, you then Marder 3 can either sit in ground and hold, or you can whack them in a tree line behind the capture position, and they can cover against enemy armored vehicles. Because obviously they're equipped with the Milan F2 and the RH202, which can obviously engage armored vehicles, which is great. And also helicopters, as you can see there. So they are definitely going on the list there. They are really good at also holding towns. The last unit I'm going to go for for holding towns is the German Falschmäger. Alright, you have a personal choice here. Um, you can have it in a Dorina 205 or the CH-35G. Whatever suits your liking, really. If you want one equipped with a weapon system on the side, go for the Dorina, or the one that you want for speed, I would say go for the Falschmäger. Uh, uh, not Falschmäger, the CH-53, should I say. Okay, the reason why I'm picking Falschmäger is the fact that Another reason, you might want to mix it up a little bit sometimes, you might want to have different special forces, is they are also good at holding towns. The main infantry role I like to have is holding towns, to honest. So, this unit has um, equipped with the 
MP2A1, which isn't that fantastic to be honest. But they're equipped with the MG3 and the PZF44. So they're pretty good. They can work well at the, um, the Panzer Grenadiers and they can get in there faster before um, obviously the Marders and the Panzer Grenadiers get in there. So that's the reason why I'm picking them. So I whack them in there as well. The last infantry I have selected for this um, deck is we need some anti tank infantry to get through tree lines. I've done it before. Had a little SAS squad in there. Brought the. Um, the and take infantry behind, take out some tanks, put them back, it's fantastic. So the vehicle I've selected for this one, the group, for my anti-tank infantry, sometimes I go for the British, but this time I've figured it out that the perfect infantry is to have is this one here, the ATGM or the French Milan F2s. The reason being, the infantry is pretty basic, they're obviously equipped with the Milan F2, got 50, uh, no, so got six missiles each and it's got a good range to it. The secondary reason is what comes at a price is an AMX 10P. It's not the best armoured vehicle, but it is one of the best armoured vehicles for the Milan's groups, I believe, in my personal opinion. It kind of gives a bit of variety there because you've got the French as well. Got to love the French. And then, um, obviously, it can provide just like the Marder, it can provide um, armoured uh, pride cover for your infantry. It can also go over in towns and move around and that lot as well. <laughs> my words are a bit slurred there. So obviously you've got an armoured vehicle there, it does the job so it's good. So they come in an armoured vehicle, this mount, there's all kinds of multi-role there, so they can also defend against infantry and other vehicles, so it's not just literally drop on and get out. So you've got a good, um, kind of good combination there with the, the Milans and the, and, oh what's the fucking word, AMX, bloody hell, AMX. So that covers my infantry that I've selected, okay? Right, the next thing is support. This is quite a big thing here, um, depending on who you are, what you like to do. Um, is Let's start off with the aerial. Um, obviously we're going to need some really good um, AA units uh, for air support. Starting off with, without a doubt, is the ADATs. Canada's ADATs. They are fantastic. These weapons are mighty roll. Um, look, they've I think they've got one. I think they're one of the best. They're quite expensive, which is kind of a bummer. But they are probably one of the best air-to-air, -air, um, not air-to-air, -air, um, air defense systems uh, in War Game Red Dragon. I probably say top five. So A you want to know what that means? It stands for Air Defense Anti-Tank System. So basically, it's an all-round thing. So it can aim for tanks and it can aim for air, air. It's in the name. So it's a dual purpose short. So it's basically a dual uh, purpose short-range surface-to-air and anti-tank missile system based. On M113A2, if that's one of to get technical about this. So, yeah, it is a good vehicle. It's fast ish, I guess, 65 kilometers per hour, but it does the job. It's quite expensive, so what I normally do with these weapon systems is um, I normally place them on the shore or like across rivers so it can engage targets from long distance and also can cover like your um, rear and stuff like that because it's obviously got a multi purpose. Mainly on shores because you can have like, you can engage landing crafts ships and it can also engage obviously aerial vehicles which is fantastic because it's a multi-role vehicle so that's the sort of thing you want okay the next thing another AA in this in my selection I've had three AA units that I've selected so the next one I'm going to go for is the Roland 3 okay you have two choices here you can go France Roland 3 or the German Roland 3 I'm going to pick in this personal opinion is the German one because it's 5 points more and I don't know what the difference is to be honest, let's just find out now what the difference is, I should have done my search beforehand which I didn't, sorry so what's the difference, 6, 5, blah, 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 10, 10 I don't think there's much difference, ah oh, there we go wait that's weird ah only difference is the German is a faster vehicle but the French have more fuel weird that's fair enough so we are going to go for, obviously, the germ one. I would say go for the germ one. Maybe you're thinking, like, oh, it's got more fuel, get one with more fuel, get one with more fuel. No, all right? Your air unit is not going to constantly be moving around. You're going to get it in one position, and it's going to be fixed there for the entire game, most likely. If you need to move around, there's enough fuel to do so. Because you're not going to send it across the entire map, unless, obviously, you're pushing forward in advance. So, yeah, the Roland 3 is obviously a um, SAM system with uh, Roland 3 missiles 
which is a pretty good weapon system. It's obviously got a good range to it to helicopters most of the time and airplanes 3,500, which is good. So it's got a good bit of capabilities. It's fast, it's got good armor. Well, not the best armor, but it's better than the ADATs. So that's a good vehicle to have. It's very good, obviously, it's mounted on a German um, Marder. I believe that is. Yeah, it is mounted on a German Marder vehicle. So yeah, that's the reason why I'm picking the Roland 3. Okay, the third vehicle I'm going to pick is go to the America, and this is one of the new vehicles that come out not so long ago. Okay, it's still I'm still kind of working into it, but I believe it's a fantastic vehicle. I hope so. So I've used it a few times. It's done a job so far, so I'm going to keep it on the list. It is the M I M M I M one zero four Patriot. Okay, it's obviously just called a Patriot in game, but in real life, it's called that. All right, so. The reason why I'm using it is obviously it's a non stop um, Obviously, the reason why I'm picking it, I can't get the words out. I'm sorry about this. If you're getting confused. I'm too fast here. I'm really sorry. But the reason why I'm picking it is the range on the airplanes. Look at that. 5,600. It is ridiculous. If you have a few of these set up, um, the planes are going to have pretty much no chance of getting into your airspace without being engaged by a Pat Riot, uh, Patriot or Pat Riot. Either or. It's kind of how you want to say it. But... These things are good. They hardly miss 70%, and they are fantastic. So they are a definite. That's a definite vehicle you want. The speed is alright. Obviously, the fuel is pretty good and everything like that. So it's a good vehicle to have if you definitely want to have some good um, AA systems. Just a quick hint here, guys. Um, whilst fighting in game, if you look here, one point here it says R. Okay, that means that's radar guided. The ADATs do not have an R. Let me find them in here. They are, the radars, um, the ADATs mean do not have R. What that means is they're not radar guided, I believe. Yeah, it's just a guided missile. And let's just have a look at these ones, just to make you aware. Uh, does it say it? Yeah, radar guidance. So basically meaning, what that means is in this game, if they're radar guided, seed missiles equipped on aircraft can engage um, those missiles freely. Obviously, it will uh, lock onto the radar guided uh, missile system or weapon system, which is the Roland 3, and engage it faster. Whereas the ADATS is not radar guided, so it won't be able to lock onto it as quick, and so therefore, meaning the sea cannot fire. So that's the thing you got to be aware of. That's why I've got a mix here of non radar guided and two radar guided, because radar guided can go a further distance. Whereas non radar guided can't. So that's the reason why I'm picking that. Okay. The fourth um, vehicle I'm going to be using. We need a bit of artillery now. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to add. Oh, let's get rid of the German. The British M11002. Am I right? Yes, I am. 0A2, shall I say, yes. Obviously a self-propelled Howitzer in real life. The reason why I'm picking this, um, there's other ones um, in the game. There's the American version. There's So basically, it's kind of your personal opinion you want to be having an American one just for the fact that it's American or the American flag. But I'm obviously British, so I'm going to go for this one. So you have a multiple choice there, guys. Just pick what you want. Um, the reason why I'm picking it is obviously the range on this thing is fantastic. 24,000 metres. And the dispression is 3,000, which is good. Obviously, the lower it is, the better it is. Heat power is good, and suppression is really good as well. Um, I think this is one of the top artillery pieces in the game. Personally, in my opinion, I'm not quite sure. But what I've seen so far is this weapon, this this weapon system can deliver what you want, which is great artillery. It's really accurate. The, obviously, the marker where you click fire position is really small, so you're definitely going to get accurate firing positions. So you want to take out a CV or anything like that. So that's definitely going to help you out a lot if you want that. So, moving on now to tank. We may fill up that spot later if there's one free. If I can throw it in there, but for now, let's move on to the tanks. Okay. Right. The first tank we are going to pick is... First off is the M1A1 Abrams. Okay, obviously this isn't a, a specific deck to a specific country, so we can't have the M1A2. I believe there is an M1A2. I'm sure there is an Abrams, one of the best ones. So we're gonna have the M1A Ab Abrams tanks. Due to the fact that it's a multi-purpose tank, it's good for advancing on the infantry and other positions because obviously it's equipped with Browning, M240, and obviously the M25-6 uh, cannon, 
which is 2,000 meters, which is the distance you roughly want all your tanks to be. This tank obviously is powerful, the accuracy is good, the stabilizer is good, the AP power is good, everything is pretty much there in proportion is what you want, and there's obviously an American tank, and everyone loves American tanks, so you've got to have a good old Abrams. My secondary tank I want to pick, these tanks are quite expensive by the way guys, so the next tank I'm going to pick is the Challenger 1 Mark III. Right, the reason why I have this tank, not just because it's British, because it's powerful and the armour is fantastic. You probably realise in this game that um, British tanks have the best armour. The Challenger 2 is absolutely amazing. I love it, right? But obviously we can't have that, so instead of that we're going to have the Challenger 1. If you really want to go, if you want to kind of bring the price down that, I would say personally, you have a choice between the Challenger 1 Mark III or the Mark II. Both are really good tanks, both have good armour, rear and the sides are all good. But obviously in my personal opinion, I would like to have the 1 Mark III. It's good range, it's roughly the same as the, um, the American Abrams, but it's got better AP power. Which kind of is, obviously that's what you want, it will actually is the same, so obviously it's going to get onto that target. And also getting a bit more power, so that kind of gives you a bit of, a little bit of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Variation within the squad. Okay, the third tank I'm gonna pick is going to be. You'll probably think arm oh, kicking are oh, clicking the big main ones, but this is how I roll. I roll tactical. I save up from the things and put them out there. Next one I go for is the Leopard 2A4. Some of you may know, or most of you may know, that Germans make some absolutely fantastic tanks, and they do. They do deliver, which is great, which is what we want. So, it's stabilizer is good, AP power is good, and Axe is good. It's roughly the same, I'll personally say it's pretty much the same as the Abrams, but obviously it hasn't got many weapon systems on it. Uh, so, got MG3. The armor is the same as the Abrams, is it? No, it's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more stronger than the Abrams. So I would say, in a battle, if you want to get a first off tank, I'd say go for Leopard. Because it's kind of got the armors in between the Challenger and the Abrams. And um, you can get it out there onto the targets uh, and quick, and obviously get them in tree lines and stuff like that to support your troops on the ground. Okay, the fourth armored uh, tank we're going to have. So you've got some pretty like average price tanks here. That not obviously these are ones that are gonna be ones that you're gonna throw out there. But if you want to start off in the game, this is what I normally this is my normal tactic I've been doing with this deck. Is using the KU Marui Shiki. I think that's it. I probably sound like a dick now. <laughs> so someone please correct me if I'm wrong, how I pronounce that, but I'll probably have to pronounce it really wrong. So the reason why I picked this tank, I keep saying this reason why, reason why, but obviously you need the reasons. Okay, let's start off. Look at the speed of these tanks. The Abram, 65. Challenger, 50. Slow. Leopard, 70. And that Kiyumaru. I'm going to say it. I'm just going to call it Kiyumaru. He's 70 miles per hour. Uh, 7 kilometers per hour. Also, let's just pin it. And have a look at this. So, you've got the Challenger 1, which is obviously our secondly best tank. The armor's 20 on the front. And so is the armor on the Kiyumaru. But obviously the speed is better, so it can get you to a position much faster, which is what you want. It's also equipped for the M2 Brown, which is much better than the L37. And it's got a better weapon system, the M120, which is what you want. Okay, so it's the reason the range is the same as the other tanks, but the axe is much more better. Stabilizer is good, and the AP power is 22. So I'm telling you now, if you start off, get a tank. I'm telling you now, buy one of these, and it can seriously hold out some tanks. I think I've held out like... Um, six. Um, I think I've held out. I think it's two tanks and like four um, armored vehicles. So it's definitely a vehicle you're going to want to get a tank. So that's going to be a mix of four tanks within a NATO uh, battle group. We'll come back and fill this spot. If there's another spot free for that, but we want to get four of these first before we fill these last two spots. Okay. Next, we are going to move on to the recon. One of my favorite tactics in game is kind of getting behind the enemy, doing special ops sort of things, getting eyes on, then taking out priority targets, okay? To do this, one of the, um, you can use the SS as a common thing, but sometimes what I normally do, I have a split up, I split my um, unit up, and I use commonly the SBS, the Special Boat Service. Obviously they're equipped with the Law, the L34A1, which is a silent weapon system, and the Bren. These guys are good for getting around the enemies, around the rear, 
they got obviously good optics and good stealth and they're good training so they obviously can get around the rear hold positions if need be because obviously they've got a Bren machine gun and obviously they can go around take out priority targets like command vehicles and helicopters and stuff like that so they're really good for getting around especially their stealth so they'll mainly be used for I know small little attacks little raids on special vehicles and stuff like that most commonly you could use them obviously obviously sighting or the optics on top of hills and stuff but I normally use another unit which is from Denmark one of the I could have normally used and I could have used the Canadian uh, recce units but in they're not available which is unfortunate so instead we can use the marine jaggers I believe that's how you pronounce it if it's not I'm sorry um, so the reason why I'm using these you can either go for either or doesn't really matter they're both the same they're literally the same aircraft don't know what difference is but we're gonna go for marine jaggers Okay, the reason why I picked these is because they're equipped with an HNK PSG-1. Okay, these men are fantastic at picking off infantry. I've just seen it before. And they sat on hills quite far away. Infantry's advancing. They're picking off, probably I think I've picked off quite a few before they get onto my position. I move my position, bug them out, get to another hill and keep on engaging. So these guys are absolutely brilliant as getting um, optics on the... Um, CV vehicle stuff like icons most of the time they're not really used for raids but you can because obviously they're equipped with the law and AG3 but I most commonly use them on sit on top of hilltops and kind of picking off infantry and kind of viewing the terrain and if you see their stealth on the bottom it's exceptional which is a little bit better than uh, SBS so you can get them around in uh, down in valleys and down in um, trees and get them around the map much more easier and less chance of getting spotted which is great so that's my secondary um, unit to use within the recon. The last one is we kind of want, at the beginning of the game, we kind of want to send something out there to get eyes on the enemy as quick as possible, but also not to be kind of just sitting duck. So what I normally use is a Kyo Warrior, due to the fact that it has Hellfire missiles and optics are exceptional, the size is very small and it's very fast. I normally pick the Gazelle because of their exceptional um, optics, but this one's better because it's smaller and it has equipped with Hellfire so it can engage targets which is good so it's kind of like a multi-roll capability so it can engage targets at a far distance 2,800 meters which is absolutely brilliant so you can take out most vehicles without getting engaged by AA so this would be my one of my top um, recon helicopters in NATO because it's just obviously it's got Hellfire so you can engage targets as well spot them but if you wanted, um, let's say, obviously you wanted to take out infantry and stuff like that, you can go for a Kia Warrior equipped with the Browning and FFAR. But in my personal opinion, I like to have the Hellfire one, so I can obviously engage long distance targets and stuff like that I see. So that's my recon done away. So the next thing I'm going to move on now is just vehicles. Alright, vehicles. So you mainly want vehicles is kind of like a secondary thing. Meanwhile, anti-tank vehicles. So we're going to start off with the French, okay? I had a kind of a kind of um, stalemate of whether to have the French AMX HOT or Jaguar II. And there was another vehicle, I think it was the Americans, um, Lavs and stuff like that. But I came to the conclusion that the AMX HOT was better because of the price. So you got good armor, well not good armor, but good armor for its um, vehicle. Speed is good and the distance, 2625 is good. So obviously, and the price is only 45 points, whereas the American Lav um, A10, wait, not A10, that's wrong, cancel that. There's other ones, where is it? Oh, I can't find it. Don't worry. That's the one I was going to say, the M9 ITV. I was going to pick that between the hot AMX, but I thought, nah. So let me show you the difference. Oh, what is the difference? The price, was that it? No. Well, in this personal opinion, you have a choice now, okay? This is what I was going to say. Between your anti-tank armoured vehicle, I'd say you have a choice between the LAV or the, um, the AMX HO2. Let's see what the difference is here. The difference is the AMX has the same difference as the LAV. I'm looking at this because this, this one vehicle I didn't look into before I did this. Sorry about this. Actually, it's better than the LAV. AP power on the AMX is better than the LAV. And do 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 reload times longer on AMX, which is kind of a bummer. Faster, more autonomy, stuff like that. All right. So basically, Lav's got more more better points to it, if that makes sense. It's got faster vehicle stuff like that. 
But I'm personally going to go for the Amex. You're probably thinking, what are you on about? You're a twat, right? But I just don't know why. But I think the AP power getting on target is better. Because that means the damage dealt when it hits the target is good. Because you want to get those rounds off, get damage dealt and get out of there. So they're constantly firing rounds off. Because that's a lot of thing you see in game. Is that the targets are hitting, but they're not doing much damage. So I like it when a target's going in, hitting a target, and done. Um, it's kind of, I wouldn't say personally there's a... Um, I'm not saying the MX is better than Lav, I'll personally say the Lav is probably better. But I'd say it's just a personal choice there, guys. Whatever you think's best, whatever you would like to have. Lav or AMX, they're both good vehicles, okay? Alright, the secondary one, just for you guys to keep you happy, the LAV25. Some of you are probably saying, why have you got that? What the hell? Why do you want that? Okay, this is kind of getting the multi purpose right here with the Marines that we have in the infantry. We have the LVTs and the LAVs and the Marines. So now this is where you kind of have a multi-role amphibious assault. So I could have, sitting there, have I can prep my LAV 25s and the Marines, red assault over an amphibious assault. So these will be backing up. These can take out, obviously, tanks in mass. If there's a mass of LAV 25s, then you might be able to engage and kill some tanks, which is what you want. So I use these LAVs 25s because they've got good range, good weapon systems. They've got a little bit of armor, and they're fast. They're also fast on... Uh, the ocean and sea, about 50 kilometers per hour on amphibious, so they are good land and assault amphibious vehicles, which is what I want to for my capabilities to do in this deck. Okay, the second, uh, the third thing we're going to be using, I kind of had a mixed choice of what to use for this last um, pick, but I kind of came to the conclusion of using the M163 due to the fact that it could run along with again with the Lab 25, but also can be used for kind of uh, defense. Um, against aircraft and ground units, but I want to use I want another AA unit that could go um, in water. But that was the only thing that I could use was the M163 um, CS. So it's equipped with the Vulcan air defense system, the VADs on top. So you can also go along with my amphibious assault and provide air support. I've seen in the past where people have done amphibious assaults and they have failed utterly due to the fact that people just send airstrikes in or helicopters and just annihilate them. So this is what I wanted. While I'm crossing over to that for that insult, I want this kind of air or superior or well not air superior. I want some air defence so they can cover me while I'm going over. So that's why I'm having this. But we'll move on to some other vehicles in a minute. So that's the only I only pick three vehicles for uh Max. There's not many vehicles at the best in the list. Okay. Moving on to the helos. Okay, I'm only going to pick two here. Reason being is helicopters is good things to have. There's some good ones, but you kind of don't want to, it depends on what you want to do here. Because obviously, I want to have a mix of everything. So, the first one I'm going to go for is an air to air helicopter, okay? Which is going to be the French Gazelle Celtic. It's not that expensive, and it's got a good um, helicopter. Uh, mi helicopter AA weapon system and it causes engaged planes. So, most of the time when I start a battle, I would get the Gazelle Celtic in the air so I could provide my ground units while they're moving in that provide um, that air sort of cover. Because obviously, when your AA units are moving, they cannot engage, or when you've got men inside vehicles, they can't engage either. So, that's why I have this covering in the air. And it's got good distance, uh, accuracy is fantastic, 60%. And it's small and it's fast, so it can get to the target as quick as possible, so it can back up your units. So that's why well, you wanna, always want to have that sort of um, air to air helicopter just to protect um, other units on the ground and other helicopters. The secondary aircraft I'm going to use, which is a no brainer, it's, a, it's there, it's available, you've got to use it, an Apache. Right? It is obviously the best um, combat helicopter in the world at this moment, some of you might think otherwise, but I think it is. Alright, the reason I'm using Apache is it's equipped with three weapon systems that can provide good multi-role weapons, uh, multi-role combat. So we've got the M230, the Hydra, and the Hellfire. So the Hellfire, just like the Kia Warrior, is 2,800 minutes, so you can gauge um, multiple targets, um, dive distance like tanks, CV vehicles, Hydras, and the M230, which I'd main, mainly use for light vehicles and infantry. Literally, the game before, I'll probably show you in a minute, um, we was literally on our back leg, and they were about to assault us, uh, our last sector. My Apache came into the position, engaged, I think it was three or four tanks, and some infantry run down a hill, engaged them, took them back, they withdrawed. So we kind of 
uh, countered their attack, which is fantastic. And we obviously put on offensive, won the battle, which is really good. So these things can provide good distance in combat and also a lifesaver in some situations. So it's a definite one you got to get. So it's obviously applied to three different weapons. And it's, it's expensive, but it's not... In fact, yeah, it's pretty expensive, but obviously when you get it, you're not going to regret it because it's a good episode. But be careful where you place this thing because they can obviously get shot down in helicopters. So you'll be very careful when you place them in a the battlefield because most of the time you're going to get shot down by AE and they're not going to last very long at all. Okay, moving on to our aircraft. All right. All right, here we go. Do I have enough? I don't think I have enough for... I need to get free aircraft. There ain't no room. What? What's going on? I suppose I have three more spaces. Oh, we'll just find out when we get in. Alright. Planes. Some people are thinking, yeah, you have mixed opinions of aircraft, okay? I'm not the most biggest expert in aircraft, but what I've seen in game, this is how I like to roll. Okay, so the first off, I like to start off with an F 15D Eagle. Reason being is because of the 1000 kg bomb it has and it's equipped with a Vulcan machine gun and the AM9M 9M so it can engage aircraft as well so I'm definitely putting it on my list no matter what anyone says that is going on my list and it's going to stay there so I'm going to use this it, obviously the 1000 kg bomb can take out priority targets it's going to take out it can take out pretty much 90% of things in one one strike um it's fast, very fast. Air detection is good. The ECM is fantastic. Electrical countermeasures is 40%. So that's good what you want what you want it to do. The Vulcan is powerful. But you don't really get in that close enough for the auto cannon to be used unless you're in a dogfight. So not only it can provide a bomb, a thousand kg bomb, which is brilliant, which is a very big bomb in this game. I think it's the second biggest bomb you can get. But it also has a Vulcan and an AMM, which it can protect itself against other aircraft. So it's not just lone bomber out there on its own. You can fight against itself but it's not going to be the best in one on one battles but he can hold out if need be okay the second aircraft we're going to pick is going to be Denmark you're probably thinking why Denmark but is that right why am I picking Fultman what am I doing why am I picking Denmark why is it a thousand kg bomb was it that oh my god now I'm confused I've confused myself now alright let me just go back Let's start. I'll figure out next one next. Okay, second aircraft is going to be a Hornet. All right. Um, make sure you pick in the right one, the 18C Hornet. Okay. The reason why I'm using this is this vehicle is brilliant against vehicles on the ground. It's equipped with the Maverick, and the distance is 3,325. This, if you really want someone to take out tanks, is either between this. Or the Thunderbolt. The reason I'm not picking the Thunderbolt is because it's slow. This thing can also, like, just like the Eagle, it can attack other aircraft and do a good job. And there's four Mavericks, so it can get in there and engage roughly four tanks, depending on the armors of the tanks. So that is one that's definitely going on my list, no matter what anyone says. Uh, oh, I just love it. It's brilliant. Let me just quick, I'm quickly going to try and locate what I've done wrong here, because I think I'm supposed to have one more aircraft. Let me go back quick. I'll explain that in a second. Ten seconds, let me see what I've done. Alright, sorry about that, made a mistake, but don't worry, there was no mistakes, still the same as well. I think I actually brought a elite unit. Obviously you can do that yourselves. In fact, no, I never did, I brought a HEMTT. That's what I did, sorry about that. So yeah, back to list logistics to not confuse you guys. You have a ch In my personal opinion, I've choose the CX-53 instead of a heavy um, HEMTT, so you can have a choice. Okay, back to air, sorry about that, ignore what I just did. If I do ignore it, if you want to do it, you wouldn't. Uh, the link will be in the description of this map anyway. Alright, so my air to air aircraft. I took a didn't take too much time in looking, but yeah I did actually. I took quite a while to look for a cheap but good air to air aircraft, okay? And that is within Denmark's I believe I got I got wrong. Oh my god, I said Denmark for the recce guys. Sorry, it's Norway. Sorry about it, guys. So Denmark's F sixteen A block fifteens. They are brilliant. Look at it. Uh, speed is good, air detection is oh, very good, ECM is 30, and the Sparrow M7M Sparrow is 7,000 meters, which is really good. So you're going to get most aircrafts, air to air aircrafts, have about 7,000 meters. Some of them are not, some are about 6,000, 5,000, so that's a good distance to have. And this aircraft is, a f I've seen it in dogfights, and it does the job. And F 16 is fantastic for dogfighting. Um, there's another aircraft, I believe it is in here. Have a choice if it's here. If it is it here? Is it here? 
Du, 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 du. Yeah. You have a choice. Between the... I'm giving you a bit of choice here, guys. You can have either the F-15C Eagle or the F-16A. These are the two aircraft I've used before. The F-15C uh, C Eagle is great. I'm telling you now, this thing I sent out alone took out um, three Russian aircraft. They weren't the most expensive, but they were pretty good. And it took them out on its own. Reason being is obviously it's just got better weapon systems, I believe. Is it? What's going on? Well, actually, no. Actually, saying that, look at the stats now. Concentrate on it. There's not much of actually. Yeah, there is. It's got a little bit more stabilizer, axi. They're rough. Yeah, obviously the eagle is better. So yeah, but the reason why I'm giving you a choice here, you might want to go for expensive aircraft or the block 15, which is a less expensive aircraft. So depending on the type of game you want, I personally like to go for the block 15 because I've already got two really expensive aircraft as it is. So I want that aircraft that can provide air support and being cheap because obviously these are quite expensive. So it's quite it's quite pretty cheap for a good um, F-16 aircraft. So that's, that's fantastic. It's what you want. So they're the three. So you have a bit of a choice there. They're the three air, uh, aircraft you can pick. Next, moving to navy. All right. The first thing I'm going to start off with is it's kind of. It depends on how you want to do it, but this is how I like to normally do it. Is um, whack on an Oliver Hazard. Okay, it's a default sort of um, straightforward. Pretty not the most expensive ship, but it's good. It's a good ship for its price. So. The reason why I'm picking Oliver's Hazard, obviously it's got good range on the radar missiles. Um, it's got good um, countermeasures to aerial def um, attack. So that's what you kind of want, is that sort of attack against these weapon systems. Um, depending on whether or not you want to have like um, amphibious assault and stuff like that, you can kind of mix this around about in your navy. But I like have, I'm just showing like a mix of general. So next one I'm going to pick is a Pua Hang class. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Naval unit. Stroll down. Here she is. Okay. So the poo hangs in navy, right? If you have any sort of um frigate or anything like that, you kind of want something to protect it. The poo hang obviously is fantastic. If you see here, the CRWS, which is close in weapon systems and design to provide anti-missile point defense. So basically, these are going to be used in front of your main uh, ships to kind of defend it against missiles and attacks from aircrafts. So that's why I have the mix between the Puhangs and Oliver Hazard, so they kind of work together to engage missiles and stuff like that. And also, uh, they can also engage targets with their Harpoon missiles, which is good. Okay, moving on to an aircraft we want. Let's say now the enemy's got ships, you're going to want to engage them. Alright, you've got a few options here. The one I mainly always go for is the F111 or F111G. Okay, reason being is it's equipped with four Harpoon missiles. It can fire up to 5,000 meters, it's fast, 1,000 kilometers, and it comes with two of them. So basically you send two out, eight missiles are going to go from 1,000, 5,600 meters. Most um, ships, um, their air defense weapons can only range up to about 3,000, 4,000 against aircraft sometimes. So you're pretty much going to have a very big advantage against them. So you send these out, they're attacking a formation, fire off eight missiles, you're most likely going to kill, kill the ship depending on how many ships there are in the fleet and what size the ship is. So this is basically one of the aircrafts you want. If you don't want that, if you're up for looking for an aircraft that is um, hasn't got a longer range but you want to have multi-purpose, go for the Tornado FMG because it has four Harpoon missiles, no, Cormoran two missiles, it's basically the same as the Harpoons. But you're, you're kind of sacrificing distance, so you have to get a little bit closer. If you've got a bit more balls than most men, you want to get a little bit closer to get in the fight, go for the tornadoes because it also packs a punch in air-to-air um, -air combat as well because it has its own um, weapon system for infrared uh, to fire against ships, uh, aircraft. So, But in my personal opinion, I like to use the F-11G because I've got some good air aircraft anyway. Okay, next, get on to a bit more amphibious assault again. Um, I like to pick... Here, da -da 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 down. Where is it? Let's find it. Find it. We'll find the vehicles first. Here it is. Obviously, we got our good tanks in our tank list, but we kind of want an amphibious assault sometimes. Sometimes I question myself whether or not I should use this because it's the first thing I picked and the first thing I like. And it's, it's quite expensive. Uh, it's about rough, roughly expensive. Two thousand meters is good. It's a good price. Not the best price, but it's good. 
So I use this an amphib assault to back up my infantry on the ground. So you kind of you can have an, an assault amphibious, and it's all going to provide tanks. Let's say my lab 25s and this and everything else going along is going to be a good amphib assault. So I'm definitely throwing it on the mix, and it's quite good um, on land. Obviously, it's not the best. The armor's not the best, but it's good if you're coming from the sea. You're not going to expect it, and they're not going to have great anti-tank weapon systems. The last thing of this deck is a no-brainer. Um, my personal opinion, again, you're probably thinking, God's sake, but yeah, it is my personal opinion, but obviously you might think otherwise. I'm most definitely not going to forget the Royal Marine Commandos. Alright, some of you probably think out there, oh, US Marines are better than Royal Marine Commandos, what are you doing? Oh. But in this game, they are better than US Marines. They are brilliant at assaulting positions and holding positions. They're equipped with um, the Law AE, which isn't as good as the other Law. Um, but it's quickly 5 and a minimum, which makes them fantastic against infantry. Um, I think I've seen these guys, just a platoon of them, so obviously four groups of these, no, four men, most four squads of these guys run into position into a town. I think it's engaged like two groups of enemy Russian infantry, or whatever that is, what their names are, and successfully done it. They are absolutely fantastic. Also, considering the fact that I would like to be a Royal Marine when I'm older, or well, not older, soon, so also kind of edges me on to definitely pick them. So they kind of give me the stalemate in the, um, they kind of finish it off, finish the job, you know what I'm saying, when you're on Amphibious Assault. You have the US Marines and the Royal Marines going in there of tanks, and they kind of finish the Amphibious Assault all in one. So basically in this pack you have a, a multi-role. You have Amphibious Assault, you have good air-to-air air defense, which is here. You have um, good air-to-air -air combat, which is the F-16 Eagle sometimes, and the blocks. Um, obviously you can provide good, um, Strikes with the Hornets and the Eagles bombs. The helicopters are good for providing support to the troops on the ground. The tanks have got a good mix of everything. The recon is fantastic. The infantry is brilliant because obviously the SES you've got um, good capabilities. There's only one thing you're sacrificing in this pack, and that is obviously your professional units like Challenger 2, the most modern units which you can't get. But I've kind of comprised this pack to be as good as it possibly can. Let me just get rid of all these quick. As best, best as possibly can. So it's kind of got mixed. The only thing the bad thing people, I think people have said to me about this pack is it's quite expensive some of the stuff. But obviously in a tactical game, you can use this tank, this the pack to its your great advantage because of the great flexibility of everything in it. You have navy, air, the whole lot is in this. So you can get some really good stuff out of this. You can get some really good wins and stuff like that if you know how to use it properly. Because it takes time and practice before you perfect it. And I've been using this pack a lot lately, and it has definitely been about 70%, 80% win rate with this pack, so it is brilliant. If you definitely have a good go, move things around if you like to kind of get to your liking, even if it's just moving, changing an FOB to whatever country you want. But that is my um, that is my opinion on the NATO pack of um, NATO. So this is my all-round NATO deck. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you like me to do these episodes, just rate, comment, subscribe below. Tell me any videos you want me to do out there for Wargame Red Dragons. There'll be more to come. And tell me what you think of this pack. And if you're using it, and tell me what, what it's like. If you've got any wins, or it's, if it's crap, tell me it's crap, I don't care. Let me know. Because it's quite funny if it is. If it is, I'll move it. I'll change it around a bit. I need the advice, and you guys, it always helps. So, end on that. What was the last thing I say? Bugger, what was the last thing I was say? Oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. Crap. I feel really bad. Oh god. Oh god, what was I going to say? Oh, I'll be back when I figure out what I'm going to say. Alright guys, I'm back. It's been 10 minutes since I was sitting on my chair thinking what I was going to say. Bang my head on the table. Right, what I was going to say is, if you guys want access to this pack, look in the description and the code is there for you to whack in there and get this pack for yourself instead of having to copy it for video by video. You can just literally copy paste the uh, code in and get the pack yourself. Okay, so I hope this has helped guys, hope this helps you win more battles, and I'll see you soon. Thanks, bye.